society's way of dealing with transgression is for punishment. Punishment starts off at, uh, uh, for most uh, people at a very young age, children are to be punished. So if they transgress the laws within the family, social norms, then they are punished. And within the house there are many different forms of punishment. Uh, depriving of liberty, um, beating, hurting someone, uh, withdrawing away the emotional f relationship or um, depriving them of food or goods or whatever. There are many different ways in which we uh, society punishes young children. Thank goodness that corporal punishment is no longer uh, the norm. But in society in general, we still have a society that believes in punishment. And we very rarely question why we feel the need to punish someone and why they need to be punished. And it's often uh, uh, amazed me that uh, we don't follow up when we punish people to just to see how effective it is. Does it work? Does it build in more anger, more resentment, more antisocial behaviour? So I'm going to look at the different types. There are five main types of uh, punishment. The first is the where we incarcerate people. Um, we lock them away because if they are antisocial and they won't conform to the norms we will put them into places like prison remand homes uh, and as a punishment and we do this we say because it's to protect society and while these people lock away they can inflict no further harm on the community is it effective and to do this we have a huge, huge network of uh, judges, magistrates, lawyers, clerks, a whole uh, um, system uh, that's brought into play uh, before we incarcerate people. Now the idea of uh, getting rid of people goes back really back to primitive times when a tribe if they had somebody who they felt was particularly dangerous to the society, would ostracise them from the community, push them out. And in those days they wouldn't survive very long. And this was a way that they had people to stick to the norms of that society. But with us we can't do that. So we have found uh, different methods of doing that. I mean we try first of all through warnings, uh, fines, uh, threats to get people to comply and if they don't then we will incarcerate them. And some of the reasons we give for incarceration is for retribution that the people who they have harmed can see that in the form of justice has been done the person has been punished for transgression and uh, they can feel satisfied that uh, for the harm they've been done there is retribution. Others see the idea of incarcerating people as a deterrent. It will stop other people from committing crimes. They will see that the consequence of their action would be that they will also be locked up and decide not to do it. Um, others see prison as a way of rehabilitation, that people will be uh, rehabilitated. And for others it's the, um, it's the restoration of balance within society, that uh, peace has been restored and justice has been done uh, when uh, uh, these decisions are made by the courts. I'm quite interested to see whether this is effective. Is it effective? And it seems for me, the most part, it isn't. Because 
these uh, people come out of uh, institutions, a lot of them, and they commit crimes again. And they're incarcerated again. And they get into a pattern of behaviour in which they um, commit crimes and go back to prison. And in talking to a lot of these people and asking why, um, they, they see it as a part of their life. It becomes habitual. And one thing that's always interests me, do the people who transgress, do they relate the, their punishment to the actual crime? And in many uh, people, individuals that I have talked to, no, they don't. They see themselves being punished by society, not for the crime they've done, but by society who has taken some sort of resentment. And they, what happens is the anger uh, builds up within them. And resentment builds up. Because when people commit antisocial behaviour, there is a reason for that. And within our society, rather than seek out what motivates someone and stop them from transgressing, it seems to be easier for society not to have to face up with the iniquities of within our social system, but to put people away, lock them up. Where I am a firm believer that the way to stop crime is a proper restoration system, where the perpetrator, first of all, has to acknowledge and see the amount of misery that it caused people. You know, if you break into somebody's house and you rifle through all their belongings and you take what doesn't belong to you, the impact on that for the person uh, who's been violated is tremendous, terribly upsetting. And the perpetrators need to see the misery that they have left behind and despair they've left behind and the violation that they've caused. And until we get uh, perpetrators to understand what they do, then we, then we don't have proper justice and we certainly don't have restoration. And the person who commits the atrocities needs not to be put in jail, but needs to restore the, uh, restore the damage that they've done, make amends. And there are many different ways of doing this. And we need to think about that very, very carefully. But most of all, we need for them to understand, the perpetrator to understand what they do when they, uh, by their antisocial behaviour and the impact on the community and individuals. And when we are able to do that, because if we, which I have and talked to um, uh, perpetrators and said to them, well, what if I, I did this to you? What if I broke into your home? And they say, well, we'll beat you up. We'll really hurt you. You know, you've got no right to do that. <clears throat> and so a lot of the their understanding is called to dissonance because they will do an act which they would hate to have done to them. And tying those two things together is really important if we are to have a, a, a civilised society. And I do agree, think about rehabilitating, that we can rehabilitate, but what it would mean is to look very closely at the way uh, of the inequalities within our society. If you're living on a large estate on the margins of a city and you're isolated and you're, you're not failing, you're not doing well at school because the school system doesn't meet your needs or fulfil your potentials or develop your skills, then you know what you're going to be angry, you're going to be an outsider and lonely and frustrated with your own life. And you see other people uh, through the media, uh, television and film, seeming to do so well and you feel left behind and you're paying no contribution to society and it's that contribution to society that all of us need. We all need to feel that we're part of this community and that we're all contributing something valuable. I also think that, uh, that 
prison isn't a deterrent. I think prison reinforces the, that uh, the people feel bad about and angry about society and also reinforces lack of self-worth. And putting them with other people who have lack of self-confidence and lack of self-worth, um, that is uh, most disheartening and reinforces the, the, the position they're in and doesn't change them. Now there are some people, definitely, who are very dangerous and I've met quite a number of people who are psychopathic and these people very very hard to reach. They are in my was mentally ill and uh, society uh, locks them up and doesn't really know how to deal with them. For me they have to be in secure units not as a punishment but a protection for the society we live in and they come under a totally different category to everybody else and I have worked many years to try and find links into changing their behaviour and to date I haven't found that link. So and then we have a whole range of people who are just greedy and status and it's funny that we seem to punish the uh, small perpetrators as I call them as against the people who uh, who in business or in politics who are whose crimes are much more enormous people who raid pension funds for instance and the misery that caused or uh, trick people out of vast sums of money these are people who we should really crack down on. These are the people we need to unmask and we need to then decide as a society how we treat these people. And one of the things is, is to strip their status and the money from them so that they don't have anything, that they don't benefit by their ill-gotten gains. Because most of the perpetrators and the small perpetrators I meet, uh, the value of what they take in, you know, is so small, weighed up against the immense cost of keeping them in prison. And there are other people who commit crimes which will be one-off and they need to be treated with a different consideration as well. And need to understand what's going on within their lives. And then if we look at the drug and the alcohol and the mentally unfit, they all have massive problems which we in society, we are to become civilised, need to um, undertake a whole new programme of how we need to deal with addiction and what we should do with mental illness. It's not their fault. They have mental problems and health problems and we need to uh, address this. This isn't about punishing them. Also, you can't allow them just to uh, inflict antisocial behaviour on society. We need to take responsibility and we need to say, right, we need a, a plan of action to deal with these people and help them. So when we look at punishment, and if we can see it's not effective, we need to become more civilised and uh, more open in our approach and more transparent uh, about the effectiveness of punishment within us, within the system that we have at the moment.